Oncolytic Virus, Wikipedia Article Audio An oncolytic virus is a virus that preferentially infects and kills cancer cells. As the infected cancer cells are destroyed by oncolysis, they release new infectious virus particles or virions to help destroy the remaining tumor. Oncolytic viruses are thought not only to cause direct destruction of the tumor cells, but also to stimulate host anti-tumor immune responses. History Herpes simplex virus Oncorin Mechanisms of action Immunotherapy Immunity as an obstacle Immunity as an ally Oncolytic behavior of wild-type viruses Vaccinia virus Vesicular stomatitis virus Poliovirus Reovirus Seneca virus Rigver Semliki forest virus Other Engineering oncolytic viruses Directed evolution Attenuation Two more targeting Reporter genes Modifications to improve oncolytic activity Suicide genes Suppression of angiogenesis Radioiodine Approved therapeutic agents the potential of viruses as anti-cancer agents was first realized in the early 20th century, although coordinated research efforts did not begin until the 1960s. A number of viruses including adenovirus, rheovirus, measles, herpes simplex, Newcastle disease virus and vaccinia have now been clinically tested as oncolytic agents. Most current oncolytic viruses are engineered for tumor selectivity, although there are naturally occurring examples such as Reovirus and the Seneca virus, resulting in clinical trials. Clinical research Approved somewhere The first oncolytic virus approved by a national regulatory agency is genetically not modified ECHO-7 strain enterovirus Rigver approved in Latvia in 2004 for treatment of skin melanoma. Later it was also approved in Georgia and Armenia. In 2005 Chinese company, Shanghai Sunway Biotech registered an oncolytic adenovirus, a genetically modified adenovirus named H101. It gained regulatory approval in 2005 from the CFDA for the treatment of head and neck cancer. The drug Talamogeny Leherperipvec was the first oncolytic herpes virus, approved for use by the US FDA and by the EMA in the EU in 2015 for the treatment of advanced inoperable melanoma. In a combined decision, members of the FDA's Oncology Drug Advisory Committee and Cellular Tissue and Gene Therapies Advisory Committee voted 22 to 1 to recommend approval of the oncolytic immunotherapy. Started Phase 3 Started Phase 2 A connection between cancer regression and viruses has long been theorized, and case reports of regression noted in cervical cancer, Burkitt lymphoma, and Hodgkin lymphoma after immunization or infection with an unrelated virus appeared at the beginning of the 20th century. Efforts to treat cancer through immunization or virotherapy, began in the mid-20th century. As the technology for creating a custom virus did not exist, all early efforts focused on finding natural oncolytic viruses. During the 1960s, Promising research involved using poliovirus, adenovirus, Coxsackie virus, echoenterovirus Rigver and others. The early complications were occasional cases of uncontrolled infection, resulting in significant morbidity and mortality, 
the very frequent development of an immune response, while harmless to the patient, destroyed the virus and thus prevented it from destroying the cancer. Only certain cancers could be treated through virotherapy was also recognized very early. Even when a response was seen, these responses were neither complete nor durable. The field of virotherapy was nearly abandoned for a time, as the technology required to modify viruses didn't exist and chemotherapy and radiotherapy technology enjoyed early success. However, now these technologies have been thoroughly developed, cancer is still a major cause of mortality and there is still a need for novel cancer therapies, this sideline therapy has now gained renewed interest. Herpes simplex virus was one of the first viruses to be adapted to attack cancer cells selectively, because it was well understood, easy to manipulate and relatively harmless in its natural state so likely to pose fewer risks. The herpes simplex virus type 1 mutant 1716 lacks both copies of the ICP 34.5 gene and as a result is no longer able to replicate in terminally differentiated and non-dividing cells but will infect and cause lysis very efficiently in cancer cells, and this has proved to be an effective tumor targeting strategy. In a wide range of in vivo cancer models, the HSV1716 virus has induced tumor regression and increased survival times. In 1996, the first approval was given in Europe for a clinical trial using the oncolytic virus HSV1716. From 1997 to 2003, strain HSV1716 was injected into tumors of patients with glioblastoma multiforme, a highly malignant brain tumor, with no evidence of toxicity or side effects, and some long-term survivors. Other safety trials have used HSV1716 to treat patients with melanoma and squamous cell carcinoma of head and neck. Since then other studies have shown that the outer coating of HSV1716 variants can be targeted to specific types of cancer cells, and can be used to deliver a variety of additional genes into cancer cells such as genes to split a harmless prodrug inside cancer cells to release toxic chemotherapy, or genes which command infected cancer cells to concentrate protein tagged with radioactive iodine, so that individual cancer cells are killed by microdose radiation as well as by virus-induced cell lysis. Other oncolytic viruses based on HSV have also been developed and are in clinical trials. One that has been approved by the FDA for advanced melanoma is Amgen's Talamogeny Leherperipvec. The first oncolytic virus to be approved by a regulatory agency was a genetically modified adenovirus named H101 by Shanghai Sunway Biotech. It gained regulatory approval in 2005 from China's State Food and Drug Administration for the treatment of head and neck cancer. Sunway's H101 and the very similar Onyx 15 have been engineered to remove a viral defense mechanism that interacts with a normal human gene P53, which is very frequently dysregulated in cancer cells. Despite the promises of early in vivo lab work, these viruses do not specifically infect cancer cells, but they still kill cancer cells preferentially. While overall survival rates are not known, short-term response rates are approximately doubled for H101 plus chemotherapy when compared to chemotherapy alone. It appears to work best when injected directly into a tumor, and when any resulting fever is not suppressed. Systemic therapy is desirable for treating metastatic disease. It is now marketed under the brand name Oncorin. With advances in cancer immunotherapy such as immune checkpoint inhibitors, increased attention has been given to using oncolytic viruses to increase anti-tumor immunity. 
there are two main considerations of the interaction between oncolytic viruses and the immune system. A major obstacle to the success of oncolytic viruses is the patient immune system which naturally attempts to deactivate any virus. This can be a particular problem for intravenous injection, where the virus must first survive interactions with the blood complement and neutralizing antibodies. It has been shown that immunosuppression by chemotherapy and inhibition of the complement system can enhance oncolytic virus therapy. Pre-existing immunity can be partly avoided by using viruses that are not common human pathogens. However, this does not avoid subsequent antibody generation. However, some studies have shown that pre-immunity to oncolytic viruses doesn't cause a significant reduction in efficacy. Alternatively, the viral vector can be coated with a polymer such as polyethylene glycol, shielding it from antibodies, but this also prevents viral coat proteins adhering to host cells. Another way to help oncolytic viruses reach cancer growths after intravenous injection, is to hide them inside macrophages. Macrophages automatically migrate to areas of tissue destruction, especially where oxygen levels are low, characteristic of cancer growths, and have been used successfully to deliver oncolytic viruses to prostate cancer in animals. Although it poses a hurdle by inactivating viruses, the patient's immune system can also act as an ally against tumors. Infection attracts the attention of the immune system to the tumor and may help to generate useful and long lasting anti tumor immunity. This essentially produces a personalized cancer vaccine. Many cases of spontaneous remission of cancer have been recorded, though not fully understood, they are thought likely to be a result of a sudden immune response or infection. Efforts to induce this phenomenon have used cancer vaccines, or direct treatment with immune-stimulating factors on skin cancers. Some oncolytic viruses are very immunogenic and may by infection of the tumor, elicit an anti-tumor immune response, especially viruses delivering cytokines or other immune-stimulating factors. Viruses selectively infect tumor cells because of their defective antiviral response. Imlogic, an attenuated herpes simplex virus, has been genetically engineered to replicate preferentially within tumor cells and to generate antigens that elicit an immune response. Vaccinia virus is arguably the most successful live biotherapeutic agent because of its critical role in the eradication of smallpox, one of the most deadly diseases in human history. Long before the smallpox eradication campaign was launched, VACV was exploited as a therapeutic agent for the treatment of cancer. In 1922, Levadity and Nicolau reported that VACV was able to inhibit the growth of various tumors in mice and rats. This was the first demonstration of viral oncolysis in the laboratory. This virus was subsequently shown to selectively infect and destroy tumor cells with great potency, while sparing normal cells, both in cell cultures and in animal models. Since vaccinia virus has long been recognized as an ideal backbone for vaccines due to its potent antigen presentation capability, this combines well with its natural oncolytic activities as an oncolytic virus for cancer immunotherapy. Vesicular stomatitis virus is a rhabdovirus, consisting of five genes encoded by a negative sense, single-stranded RNA genome. In nature, VSV infects insects as well as livestock, where it causes a relatively localized and non-fatal illness. The low pathogenicity of this virus is due in large part to its sensitivity to interferons, a class of proteins that are released into the tissues and bloodstream during infection. 
These molecules activate genetic antiviral defense programs that protect cells from infection and prevent spread of the virus. However, in 2000, Stajadal, Lichtetal demonstrated that defects in these pathways render cancer cells unresponsive to the protective effects of interferons and therefore highly sensitive to infection with VSV. Since VSV undergoes a rapid cytolytic replication cycle, infection leads to death of the malignant cell and roughly a 1,000-fold amplification of virus within 2,4-H. VSV is therefore highly suitable for therapeutic application, and several groups have gone on to show that systemically administered VSV can be delivered to a tumor site, where it replicates and induces disease regression, often leading to durable cures. Attenuation of the virus by engineering a deletion of MET51 of the matrix protein ablates virtually all infection of normal tissues while replication in two more cells is unaffected. Recent research has shown that this virus has the potential to cure brain tumors, thanks to its oncolytic properties. Poliovirus is a natural neuropathogen, making it the obvious choice for selective replication in tumors derived from neuronal cells. Poliovirus has a plus-strand RNA genome the translation of which depends on a tissue-specific internal ribosome entry site within the 5 untranslated region of the viral genome, which is active in cells of neuronal origin and allows translation of the viral genome without a 5 cap. Grami IRETAL replaced the normal poliovirus IRS with a rhinovirus IRS, altering tissue specificity. The resulting PV1 virus was able to selectively destroy malignant glioma cells, while leaving normal neuronal cells untouched. Rheoviruses, an acronym for respiratory enteric orphan virus, generally infect mammalian respiratory and bowel systems. Most people have been exposed to rheovirus by adulthood, however, the infection does not typically produce symptoms. The link to the rheovirus oncolytic ability was established after it was discovered to reproduce well in various cancer cell lines and lyses these cells. Rheolicin is a formulation of rheovirus that is currently in clinical trials for the treatment of various cancers. Seneca virus, also known as Seneca Valley virus, is a naturally occurring wild-type oncolytic P. coronavirus discovered in 2001 as a tissue culture contaminate at Genetic Therapy, Inc. The initial isolate, SVV001, is being developed as an anti-cancer therapeutic by Neotropics, Inc. under the name NTX010 for cancers with neuroendocrine features including small cell lung cancer and a variety of pediatric solid tumors. In the 1960s, a group of scientists in Latvia led by Dr. Ana Musini studied oncolytic activity of echoviruses, but in 1968 a clinical trial of five echoenterovirus strains began. Scientists decided to continue researching ECHO-7 strain of ECHO virus, because it showed the most pronounced oncolytic properties. In 2004 Rigver was patented and registered in Latvia and since then it has been used in cancer therapy. Rigver virus was approved in Georgia in February 2015, but in 2016 it was approved also in Armenia. Recent retrospective study published in Melanoma Research revealed that IBIIC melanoma patients treated with oncolytic virus Rigver were 4.39, 6.57-fold lower mortality than those, who according to melanoma treatment guidelines did not receive virotherapy and were only observed. In 2015 Rigver was included into the Latvian National Guidelines for Treatment of Skin Cancer and Melanoma, developed by the Riga Eastern Clinical University Hospital Task Force.
In July 2016 three case reports results were published in APMIS journal about RIGVER efficacy in treatment of lung cancer and histiocytic sarcoma. Semliki forest virus is a virus that naturally infects cells of the central nervous system and causes encephalitis. A genetically engineered form has been preclinically tested as an oncolytic virus against the severe brain tumor type glioblastoma. The SFV was genetically modified with MICR ORNA target sequences so that it only replicated in brain tumor cells and not in normal brain cells. The modified virus reduced tumor growth and prolonged survival of mice with brain tumors. The modified virus was also found to efficiently kill human glioblastoma tumor cell lines. The Maruba virus, first identified in Brazilian sandflies, is being tested clinically. An innovative approach of drug development termed directed evolution involves the creation of new viral variants or serotypes specifically directed against tumor cells via rounds of directed selection using large populations of randomly generated recombinant precursor viruses. The increased biodiversity produced by the initial homologous recombination step provides a large random pool of viral candidates which can then be passed through a series of selection steps designed to lead towards a pre-specified outcome without requiring any previous knowledge of the resultant viral mechanisms that are responsible for that outcome. The pool of resultant oncolytic viruses can then be further screened in preclinical models to select an oncolytic virus with the desired therapeutic characteristics. Directed evolution was applied on human adenovirus, one of many viruses that are being developed as oncolytic agents, to create a highly selective and yet potent oncolytic vaccine. As a result of this process, Colorado AD1 was generated. This hybrid of adenovirus serotypes AD11P and AD3 shows much higher potency and tumor selectivity than the control viruses and was confirmed to generate approximately 2 logs more viral progeny on freshly isolated human colon tumor tissue than on matching normal tissue. Attenuation involves deleting viral genes, or gene regions to eliminate viral functions that are expendable in tumor cells, but not in normal cells, thus making the virus safer and more tumor-specific. Cancer cells and virus-infected cells have similar alterations in their cell signaling pathways, particularly those that govern progression through the cell cycle. A viral gene whose function is to alter a pathway is dispensable in cells where the pathway is defective, but not in cells where the pathway is active. The enzymes thymidine kinase and ribonucleotide reductase in cells are responsible for DNA synthesis and are only expressed in cells which are actively replicating. These enzymes also exist in the genomes of certain viruses and allow viral replication in quiescent cells, so if they are inactivated by mutation the virus will only be able to replicate in proliferating cells, such as cancer cells. Transductional targeting involves modifying the viral code proteins to target tumor cells while reducing entry to non-tumor cells. This approach to tumor selectivity has mainly focused on adenoviruses and HSV1, although it is entirely viable with other viruses. Non-transductional targeting involves altering the genome of the virus so it can only replicate in cancer cells, most frequently as part of the attenuation of the virus. Transcription targeting can also be used where critical parts of the viral genome are placed under the control of a tumor-specific promoter. A suitable promoter should be active in the tumor but inactive in the majority of normal tissue, particularly the liver, which is the organ that is most exposed to blood-borne viruses. Many such promoters have been identified and studied for the treatment of a range of cancers, similarly, 
viral replication can be finely tuned with the use of MICR ORNA's artificial target sites or MIRNA response elements. Differential expression of MIRNAs between healthy tissues and tumors permit to engineer oncolytic viruses detargeted from certain tissues of interest while allowing its replication in the tumor cells. Started Phase I Oncolytic viruses in conjunction with existing cancer therapies Clinical trials Preclinical research In fiction there are two main approaches for generating tumor selectivity, transductional and non-transductional targeting. Double targeting with both transductional and non-transductional targeting methods is more effective than any one form of targeting alone. Both in the laboratory and in the clinic it is useful to have a simple means of identifying cells infected by the experimental virus. This can be done by equipping the virus with reporter genes not normally present in viral genomes, which encode easily identifiable protein markers. One example of such proteins is GFP which, when present in infected cells, will cause a fluorescent green light to be emitted when stimulated by blue light. An advantage of this method is that it can be used on live cells and in patients with superficial infected lesions, it enables rapid non-invasive confirmation of viral infection. Another example of a visual marker useful in living cells is luciferase, an enzyme from the firefly which in the presence of luciferin, emits light detectable by specialized cameras. The E. coli enzymes beta-glucuronidase and beta-galactosidase can also be encoded by some viruses. These enzymes, in the presence of certain substrates, can produce intense colored compounds useful for visualizing infected cells and also for quantifying gene expression. Oncolytic viruses can be used against cancers in ways that are additional to lysis of infected cells. Viruses can be used as vectors for delivery of suicide genes, encoding enzymes that can metabolize a separately administered non-toxic prodrug into a potent cytotoxin, which can diffuse to and kill neighboring cells. One herpes simplex virus, encoding a thymidine kinase suicide gene, has progressed to phase 3 clinical trials. The herpes simplex virus thymidine kinase phosphorylates the prodrug, gancyclovir, which is then incorporated into DNA, blocking DNA synthesis. The tumor selectivity of oncolytic viruses ensures that the suicide genes are only expressed in cancer cells, however a bystander effect on surrounding tumor cells has been described with several suicide gene systems. Angiogenesis is an essential part of the formation of large tumor masses. Angiogenesis can be inhibited by the expression of several genes, which can be delivered to cancer cells in viral vectors, resulting in suppression of angiogenesis, and oxygen starvation in the tumor. The infection of cells with viruses containing the genes for angiostatin and endostatin synthesis inhibited tumor growth in mice. Enhanced anti-tumor activities have been demonstrated in a recombinant vaccinia virus encoding anti-angiogenic therapeutic antibody and with an HSV1716 variant expressing an inhibitor of angiogenesis. Addition of the sodium iodide symporter gene to the viral genome causes infected tumor cells to express NIS and accumulate iodine. When combined with radioiodine therapy it allows local radiotherapy of the tumor, as used to treat thyroid cancer. The radioiodine can also be used to visualize viral replication within the body by the use of a gamma camera. This approach has been used successfully preclinically with adenovirus, measles virus, and vaccinia virus. In 2014 to 2016 period a number of clinical trials were initiated for a wide range of oncolytic virus products, 
reflecting the ongoing clinical development of this class of therapy. Abbreviations, 5-FC, 5-fluorocytosine, GMCSF, granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor, IFN, interferon, Magia 3, melanoma antigen family A3, S.C, subcuta masterisk initiated between 2014, March 1st and 2015, October 31st. It is in conjunction with conventional cancer therapies that oncolytic viruses have often showed the most promise, since combined therapies operate synergistically with no apparent negative effects. Onyx 015 underwent trials in conjunction with chemotherapy before it was abandoned in the early 2000s. The combined treatment gave a greater response than either treatment alone, but the results were not entirely conclusive. Vaccinia virus GLONC1 was studied in a trial combined with chemo and radiotherapy as standard of care for patients newly diagnosed with head and neck cancer. Herpes simplex virus, adenovirus, rheovirus, and murine leukemia virus are also undergoing clinical trials as a part of combination therapies. Chen ETAL used CV706, a prostate-specific adenovirus, in conjunction with radiotherapy on prostate cancer in mice. The combined treatment resulted in a synergistic increase in cell death as well as a significant increase in viral burst size. No alteration in viral specificity was observed. Spraver has also shown synergy in preclinical research when used in combination with several cancer chemotherapies. The anti-angiogenesis drug Bevacizumab has been shown to reduce the inflammatory response to oncolytic HSV and improve virotherapy in mice. A modified oncolytic vaccinia virus encoding a single-chain anti-VEGF antibody was shown to have significantly enhanced anti-tumor activities than parental virus in animal models. In science fiction, the concept of an oncolytic virus was first introduced to the public in Jack Williamson's novel Dragon's Island, published in 1951 although Williamson's imaginary virus was based on a bacteriophage rather than a mammalian virus. Dragon's Island is also known for being the source of the term genetic engineering. The plot of the Hollywood film I Am Legend is based on the premise that a worldwide epidemic was caused by a viral cure for cancer. <laughs>